Uh, if you have your Bible, go ahead and open to, where am I going to tell you to open to? Romans 12. Romans 12. I really thought you guys were going to say Ephesians 4. Well, I would say that you saved yourself an embarrassment, but you, you really didn't. <laughs> let us know. Okay, so just to kind of catch us up where we are right now, we are talking about the gifts that God has given. Uh, we looked at the gifts in Ephesians 4. Um, these are uh, what, for, for lack of a better term, we're going to call the equipping gifts. Uh, these are the gifts that God has given for the building up of the church. Um, apostle, prophet, evangel evangelist, and pastor, teacher. Um, now I know why my page was on Psalm 36 and not Psalm 34. We're going to blame Colin. Um, we took a look real quickly at 1 Peter 4, uh, and we saw that, that Peter, instead of giving us a list, he breaks it down into two categories, uh, those that, that are gifted with, with uh, speech and those that are gifted with acts. Uh, so if you're gifted with speech, that you would speak, and, and if you are gifted with acts, that you would act. Um, now we're going to get into Romans 12. Hopefully, uh, you guys actually read this in context. You backed up before it. You read on through after it. Um, I want to start by saying none of these lists are intended to be exhausted. Okay? Um, so when, when we're looking at uh, Romans, um, we're going to see uh, some of the gifts that appeared in Ephesians and some that will appear in 1 Corinthians. Um, Paul is in no wise trying to say this is all the gifts, you know, that from here to here and that's it, nothing else, okay? Um, I think he's just trying to, to point out what are commonly seen as gifts being used in the operation of the church. So um, we're going to start off back in verse 1 so that we, we understand in context. Uh, we, Paul has just finished up talking about Israel uh, and, and how... Um, God's promises to Israel will be fulfilled, that the Gentiles have been grafted in. When the time of the Gentiles is over, God will still fulfill all of his promises, every one of his promises to Israel. And then he goes down in verse 12, and he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Okay, while well, we could do a whole series just on that, um, but we're not going to right now. Uh, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. <sighs> Um, so, context here. Paul is talking about our ministry, our lives, uh, how we are to um, be cognizant of what our focus should be. He's, he's saying, you know, don't, don't look like the world does. Don't give in to them. Okay? We have been called out from. We have, we have been made holy. We have been sanctified. We're no longer a part of the world. We're, we're different. We're unique. We're special. Okay? And he says, don't be like them. Instead, be transformed. Now, this is a miraculous word just in and of itself because it's taking something from one thing and making it something else. And we are being, uh, Paul elsewhere says, that uh, we have taken on a new life. The old is gone. The old is dead. But we have been born again into a new life. And that process, that sanctification process, is, is really right here. Um, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Uh, you know, we've, we've got old and yucky minds. We, we have bad ways of thinking. Okay? We have patterns. We have 
ruts that, that we find very easy to slide into. But personally, I'm a griper. I'm a complainer. Um, I, what? <laughs> Where's the usher? <laughs> okay. Um, one of those things that I really have to work at is to see the good uh, because most of the time the bad jumps out at me. Okay? I, I'm learning, I'm learning to wade through that to the good. Okay? So um, being transformed by the renewing of our minds. So why? So that we can test and discern what is the will of God. Now, if you think about that for just a minute, that is an incredible, incredible gift that he has given us. That we might be able to test and discern what is his will. Okay? Um, that's, that's sealed in us by the Holy Spirit. And the, the, the Holy Spirit is the revealer of truth. And, and we are unique in all of the history of the world in that even before Adam and Eve fell in the garden, we have been sealed, we have been indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. Adam and Eve were not indwelt with the Spirit of God. Okay? Abraham was not indwelt with the Spirit of God. Moses... David, Solomon, John, Paul, well, yeah, Paul was. Uh, John the Baptist was not, he was anointed, but he was not indwelt. Um, we have a unique place in the history of the world in that with the indwelling of the Spirit, we can know what God desires. Um, so moving on, verse 3, for by grace given me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Now, um, this measure of faith thing, um, there are some people that just, they just have faith. I mean, they just, it, it's, it's amazing to talk to them. Um, there are some issues in my life where I have absolute faith what God's will is. And, and I, I'm sorry, you will never dissuade me. Okay? I know that Christ died for my sins. I know that. I, I don't care what philosophy you, you uh, espouse. I don't care what degrees you have. I know that Christ died for me. And because of that, I know that I stand before God righteous. Not because I have anything in and of myself that is worthy of righteousness, but because Christ stood in my place and took the punishment for my sin, and in return, I was given the righteousness of God. Amen. Okay? I'm not going to move off of that. Okay? Even when I stumble, when I blow it, and sometimes I blow it big. You know, Sometimes I just... You, I, you, you, what are you doing? Okay. Well, I know you guys don't. Um, you know, because um, but but you know, it, it's an amazing thing that uh, you know. He says, by the measure of faith, how much faith do you need? If you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, "Be thou removed into the sea, and it will be done." Obviously, none of us here has that much faith. Okay, but but there is there are some that are gifted with a, a measure of faith that is beyond what others are gifted with. We all have faith unto salvation. At least that's my prayer: is that every one of us has faith unto salvation. Okay, that that uh, we absolutely believe that uh, Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God. That He came in the form of a man that he lived a perfect sinless life, that he died in our place, that he was resurrected on the third day to prove that what he said before he died, it is finished, really meant it is finished. The price for sin is paid, it is accomplished. Okay, but then there are others that have a greater measure of faith. Um, but, notice what he says here, and, and this is something that is very... Um, Pride is very insidious. 
it sneaks in when we're not looking, and, and a lot of times it dresses itself up as other things. Um, but Paul is addressing here, by the grace that is given to him, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought. And, and him and he there is uh, Adelphoi, meaning men and women. It's, it's the whole spectrum. So women, this applies to you as well. Uh, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought, uh, but uh, to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Now, what... Uh, Paul says elsewhere, what did you give that you did not receive? Yeah. Okay. And if you received it, why do you act as though you didn't? Um, you know, people just have natural giftings. They have natural talents. They have natural abilities that, that God has gifted them with. Um, uh, by the way, worship was awesome this morning. Did you guys notice the drums? Yes. 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 Wow. Yes. Um, Steve and Angie always do a good job. They work hard to, to come and bring us into the presence of God with the songs. Um, it was a blessing to have, uh, of course, Nathan is up there with them now. Uh, and that really throws me off because I hear Steve singing in two different places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. It really, you know, uh, and, and James and Leslie coming in uh, were just a blessing. I, I, I'm so appreciative of the worship that we have here at Jesus Community Church. Um, but if, if these things are given to you, why do you act as though, you know, you're something special? Because remember, the one that gave them to you can also take those away from you. Um, I remember reading... Um, about Keith Green. And ironically enough, this, this same thing happened in a parallel situation with Rich Mullins. Uh, toward the end of their life, uh, they were both starting to get concerned that they were becoming idols to the people that they were ministering to. People were more c concerned or more drawn to Keith Green or Rich Mullins than they were to the God that Keith and Rich were professing. And uh, both of them had written down or discussed with other people uh, this fact, and within a very brief time, both of them were taken home. Um, God will not share his glory with anyone, okay? Um, it, it is his and his alone. Okay, so uh, now that we've been put in our place, uh, we, we think with sober judgment uh, and, and understanding, and I love this thought because this, this is a right understanding of who we are and where we are in relation to who God is and where God is and how far removed he is from us, and yet he has chosen to bridge that gap that we might come into his presence. Uh, if, if you don't have an understanding of your sin, you can't understand his grace. Okay? Um, so, not that we dwell in condemna condemnation or guilt, but we have to have a right understanding. We have to understand where we came from, okay? So, um, be sober in your thinking. Um, so then Paul goes to an analogy that he uses several times. Verse 4, for as in one body we have many members, and the members do, all, do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, okay? So there's this whole idea of, of a single body. Now, uh, what, the way Paul is presenting this here, and I want to point this out to you because this is significant. Uh, God is not interested in cookie-cutter Christians, okay? Um, we are unique. Thank God that I am the only one of my kind, <laughs> okay? Um, Yes. Thanks, Mary Lou. <laughs> See, Mary Lou makes sure I don't ever think more highly of myself. <laughs> um, but if we look at this, it is one body, but it is made up of unique parts. Okay? When God calls us into the body of Christ, we will come to share similarities. Okay? Um, I, I told the story of, of me and my siblings. We used to like to talk on the phone because people couldn't tell our voices apart. Um, I've also done that with um, the, the, my kids uh, and really confused people as to who they're talking to. 
Um, I, honestly, I don't see it, but there is a look that man notes tend to have. Um, please, please, please don't ever tell me I look like my siblings, because um, that, that would be harsh. Um, so, but there are similarities, both because of nature, the way that God built us uh, in a particular family, and by nurture because of the way that we were raised. Um, my siblings and I have same facial expressions. Uh, we use uh, the same words when expressing ourselves in a lot of cases. And keep in mind, I haven't lived with any of my siblings for a long time. <laughs> you know, when you go past 30, you just kind of go, oh, okay. Um, so, uh, so there are similarities, but those similarities do not and should not deny our uniqueness, okay? Now, we, we should all share the fruit of the Spirit, okay? It's, it's the Spirit's fruit, it's the Spirit that lives in us, so the fruit that is born out in our lives is because of the Spirit living in us. So we should all have spiritual fruit because we have the Spirit, but we're not all gonna have it in the same measure, okay? Some are going to be strong in some areas and weak in others. And, and then there are others that will be strong here and weak there. Um, again, remember, this isn't about perfection. It's about increasing more and more, progressing. Okay? So uh, one body, many members, and we do not all have the same function. Okay? Um, you look at building a house, as a matter of fact, you can look at the way my house was built. My house was built by a plumber. And you can tell that he was not a carpenter, or an electrician, or a sheet rocker, or a painter. Um, the water gets from where it's supposed to go to where it's needed without going other places. So yes, the, the plumbing works. Um, but but if we have this same idea uh, in the church that everybody should be you know, in, in the same place or moving toward the same particular thing, the same particular job or ministry, and that's bogus. Okay? The same thing that we should be moving towards is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, and he's going to take me in a radically different route than he's going to take you. But the end result has got to be Jesus Christ. So we have one body that is made up of unique parts that do not have all the same fu function. Uh, verse 5, um, verse 6, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us then, uh, let us use them. And then I'm going to pause right there because he's going to go through the list. But we each have gifts according to what? Grace. Grace. It's according to grace that is given to us. Okay? So, so not only is, is the grace uh, given to us from God that is our salvation, but also the giftings that he gives us that's dependent on his grace. He knows how we're built. He built us. Amen. He knows where we excel. He knows where we slide down and fail. He knows, he knows where best to put us, all right? So, here's the gifts. He goes through the list. Uh, the first one, um, if prophecy, then in proportion to our faith. Again, there's that measure. Um, we're not actually going to talk about prophecy today. I'm going to use that in another group. But starting right here, I'm going to call this group, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, body ministry gifts. Okay, these are gifts that are used to minister within the body of Christ. Uh, if you look back in Ephesians 4, those were uh, ministry gifts to equip the body of Christ. These are ministry gifts that, that, that are directed into the body. So we have prophecy. I'm going to include that later with, with a, a different set of gifts. Um, then we move on to if service in our serving. So, so we use the gift uh, according to the grace given us. If, if your, your ministry, your, your gifting is service, serve. Okay? Um, you know, and I, I've got all the Greek words. <coughs> Excuse me. 
the, the Greek word here being used is didaskos, uh, which is the same word that we get deacon. Okay, and, and you know what it means? Servant. 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 <laughs> and you know, Greek is really complicated. Um, actually, depending on the way that it's used, and, and by inference in Acts, it actually means a, a table waiter. Okay, the, the, the person that does not sit at the table, but the one that serves. Okay, so uh, if you are gifted with service, then serve. And I want to I wanna speak to each of these gifts as we go through because there's something very important here that needs to be done. Um, these gifts, we want to quantify and organize and prioritize these things because that's how our brains work. That's how Western thinking works. Uh, we, everything has an order, so we want to put these in order. But... Um, in the body of Christ, in the ministry gifts that the Spirit of God gives us, they are all necessary. Okay? Every one of them is necessary, and every one of them needs to be used for the proper and healthy functioning of the body of Christ, the church. Okay? So when, when you look at these things and when you took your test, I, I hope you were honest on the test. Okay? Um, don't aspire to be a particular thing. Let God build you as he most desires you to be built. Okay? Um, because service <laughs> I know you guys heard that. <laughs> I actually believe that uh, service is one of the key necessary ingredients uh, to being a Christian. Okay? Um, if you are not willing to and not acting in service to others, I would call into question your maturity in the faith. Okay? Um, I'm not questioning your salvation. That's God. See, he deals with that. But all Christians, all are called to be servants. Okay? And if your gift is service, um, my dad had the gift of service. And we, there was not a Sunday that went by that my dad did not have us stacking chairs, unstacking chairs, mm -hmm. moving tables, my dad was always at church early, early, early to make sure everything was working right. And we always stayed late, late, late to make sure everything was put back. Okay, my dad had the gift of service. Now, my siblings and I, I don't know if it was by nature or by nurture, but we all also serve with, with gifts of service. But I don't know if that's because my dad made me. You know, when you go to church and tables need to be set up, you just set up tables. That's how it works. Okay, but one of the key elements that I want to point out here is that if your gift is service, you are enabling people with other gifts to use their gifts. Okay, so if somebody is gifted with exhortation and they get bound up because they have to set up tables and chairs because those gifted with service aren't, aren't acting in their gift, you're denying the body the use of all of the gifts. Okay? So if you are called to serve, like I said, I believe that is the highest calling in the body of Christ. Serve. All right? So, next. Um, teaching. Didaskos. Uh, if your gift is teaching, then teach. Uh, didaskos is to impart or instruct by word of mouth. Okay, so that's, that's, hopefully that's what I'm doing. I'm instructing, I'm teaching, I, I'm opening up the things of the word and I'm making them relevant and understandable to you. Uh, if your gift is teaching, teach. You know, I gotta back up, I should have said this at the start. Uh, we had our 101 class yesterday. I uh, thank you for those that came out, I, I was blessed. Um, everything that I say I want you to understand that there are going to be times when you need a season of rest. Okay? You, you need to step back and be fed and be refreshed and be re-energized. Okay? That everybody needs that time. 
okay? Uh, we see in Scripture, we see in the Gospels, Jesus took that time. You know, there were times where he pulled him and his disciples apart by themselves so that they might be refreshed. There were times where he took just the three by themselves with him and, and that they might be refreshed. There were times when he went by himself to be refreshed. There is nothing wrong with a season of refreshing unless that season becomes your life. Okay? You get fed. You get re-energized. You get revitalized. You get healthy. And then you get back into doing what God has called you to do. Okay? That's something that I try to keep my eye on is when I see people potentially taking on too much. And so if I, uh, you come to me and you say you want to do something and I say no, it's not because I don't trust you. Okay? It is probably most because I want to make sure you're not putting yourself into a place to get burned out. Okay? So... Everything that I say here, if you are gifted in this way, then I'm, I'm going to encourage you to use that with the understanding that you might need a season of rest. Okay, so teaching, teach. Uh, the one who exhorts to exhort, uh, some of the other ones actually say encouragement. Um, the word is uh, parakaleo, and what it means is to uh, encourage or admonish. Now, usually we see those things as two opposite sides. Um, you know, the, somebody's house burns down, the encourager shows up and wraps them up in their arms and tells them that everything's going to be okay. It's okay. The exhorter is going to start poking through the rubble trying to figure out what happened so that it doesn't happen again. Well, hey, you left the gas on and, you know, now, which is better? Well, it depends on what you need in the moment. They're both necessary. Okay? They're both necessary. But, but keeping in mind that we are called to speak what? The truth. How? In love. If all you have is love and there's no truth, you're doing them a disservice. If, however, all you have is the truth and you don't have love, you're equally doing them a disservice. Okay? Speaking the truth in love. Okay. Um, exhortation. Cont contributions. Uh, if your gift is to give... Give generously. This is metadidomai. It's two words. Um, to, the first word meta being either with or in association with. Didomai, uh, to give or to share. So, so giving to one another. Um, in, in scripture, most oftentimes we see this word uh, specifically being used in the giving of alms. Okay? Now remember in our, our money series... We talked about three different types of giving. There's tithing, there's offering, and there's alms. And alms are the things where you step in, you see somebody has a need, and you step in, and you help meet that need. It's different from offerings and tithings. Okay? All three are necessary for the healthy uh, body, for the healthy Christian. Okay? But there are those that are gifted with giving that, that for whatever reason, I mean, you cannot outgive God. They, they just give and give and give. That is their call. That is their ministry. That's what God has blessed them to do. Um, uh, the one who leads. Uh, some of your translations might say uh, administers or administration. Uh, this is the one. Uh, the, the word is prostemi. Um, and what it literally means is to preside or to rule. Uh, the idea is actually to stand over. Now, a lot of the uh, concepts that, that they have there have very different meanings than what we understand them to be because I don't like people standing over me. Okay? I mean, when, when you think of someone standing over you, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Micromanage. Micromanage. Control. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Lordship. Lordship. Yeah. We don't, I mean, especially in America where we don't have really... Um, differences of place, um, you know, like you, you have in England where they have royalty and, and, you know, kings and queens and princes and one less prince now, um, and, and lords and barons and all, all of that stuff. We don't have that, so we don't really, we don't really understand difference in position, okay? We, we really, in America, we have a hard time understanding that, but God has called some to direct the affairs of others. And if they're not doing their job, then somebody that is not gifted in that ministry is going to have to step into it, and the church is not going to be working as effectively as it could. 
Okay? It, it's not going to be effective on two fronts because you've got somebody leading who is not called and gifted to lead, and the person that is not called or gifted to lead is not able to do the gifting and the leading that they were intended to do. Okay? So, so all of these parts are necessary. Uh, and then the last one, acts of mercy. Um, this is LAO, L-A-O, and this literally means um, those who are in charge of the poor, okay? Mercy, having compassion, looking after those that need looking after, uh, those that come alongside of somebody that's having a hard time and, and doesn't come in judgment but comes and walks with them, okay? Now, each of these are ministries that are necessary for the, the body to work properly. But this list is not exhaustive. These are only examples. So if you look at these and you go, oh, I'm not really gifted in any of those. Well, I, I would tell you two things. First, I would say you probably are in at least one of these. You're just not aware of it. Or... You are gifted in another way that is not listed here. Okay? If, if this was meant to be exhaustive, Paul wouldn't have re reiterated two separate lists here. Because we have lists uh, in Ephesians that doesn't have everything that's listed here. And we have a list in 1 Corinthians that doesn't have everything that's listed here. This is not meant to be exhaustive. Comprehensive. This is a sample. Okay? So, in order for the body to work properly, each of these gifts must be used. If uh, you are just finding out what your gift is, come talk to me. I will try and match you up with somebody that has that gift and has been operating in that gift so that they might teach you. Okay? Because some of these gifts, I'm not gifted in. <laughs> What's up with all the hats? <laughs> See, now I'm derailed. <laughs> All right. So, keeping in mind the context in which these gifts are being used is the proper order and functioning of the body of Christ in the world, how we are to work within the body, how the body is to excel, how the body is to function properly so that we might then interact with, not become part of, but interact with the world around us. Because ultimately, our number one goal in the ministry that we have here on earth, obviously the, the first is to glorify God, but one of the means by which we do that is by making His name and His grace, His gospel known to those that are living in the dark. Alright? Okay, so next week, we're going to get into 1 Corinthians. I want you to read um, chapter 12, chapter 13, and chapter 14. Um, so you'll get an idea because what, what really happens in 1 Corinthians 12 is such a small part of what Paul is really addressing at this point.